I'm going to just uh, briefly uh, not really introduce the speakers, because I think they will introduce properly themselves. But uh, I have to tell you that the choice of having uh, John Lowe as a representative um, of a number of projects that they will actually uh, see in the exhibition, and if you didn't see this exhibition, please do and, 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 uh, and uh, see uh, all these projects. And uh, Telecommunisten is kind of a, a daring choice. It's not the common choice of, of, uh, of a session, uh, because uh, the, they will be talking about different projects, different attitudes, different ways of intervening, of exploiting, of disrupting uh, the functioning of very complex systems. No matter if these systems are digital or analog, probably this distinction is always uh, blurred, in fact, but no matter if the, the, the systems affected by this exploit are the public space or the public space on the networks. On the one side, you have a, a number of projects that uh, John Law has been an active part of, like the Suicide Club, the Cacophony Society, the Billboard Liberation Front, etc. They were dealing with occupying weird spaces, forgotten spaces in our cities or outside of the city. You've seen the car hunt in the desert. You've seen um, people like normal people, apparently normal people, maybe not very normal, <laughs> or, or extremely normal people, that's something we should do, like climbing bridges, you know. And, um, or uh, changing, improving, actually, billboards on, on, uh, in a public space, uh, on the one side. On the other side, telecommunisten, uh, which have been, in the last years uh, of this century, have been um, investigating and experimenting a lot with this technological and social infrastructure that we now call the internet. And they've been experimenting with different ways of, in a way, showing, exposing the hidden paths, the hidden logics of the networks. So what do they have in common? Uh, the idea of disruption, the idea of exploiting systems, that's for sure. Uh, they also have in common other, other basic issues. One of them is probably uh, generosity, which is a, a, a strange word. Usually when you go into the art environment, uh, you don't hear this word very much. Uh, it sounds kind of naive, you know, what's about generosity, you know? But uh, instead I think that, uh, and not just me, many people think that generosity is the basis of some, any, any type of cooperation. And so the cooperation can happen in uh, networks of people that share attitudes, share, share time, share tools, share ideas um, on the networks, off the networks. That's not the point. In fact, uh, John Lowe probably will talk about, and if not, he actually uh, the, the project ex uh, exhibited in the, in the in the show are really revealing on this in this sense. The Cacophony Society, the Billboard Liberation Front, the Suicide Club. They were all some sort of networks of people involving, cooperating, and creating weird things, new ways of inhabiting the public space. In a way, we could even tell that they created some analog memes uh, before the time of the networks. You know, the Santa cons, you know, crazy Santas like disrupting public space. That was a real meme before, uh, before lolcats, and. Uh, so they have many things in common. One other, another thing in common is the idea of surprise, the building surprise, something that we are not used to anymore. Uh, and uh, recreating this sense of risk, of taking risks. Taking risks when you actually decide to use technologies, system, public space in a different way. All these ingredients, in a way, are very basic ingredients to keep the public sphere open and healthy. Public sphere is not just public space, but physical space. There is public sphere on the networks. The public sphere is that place where a community, a society, come together, fight, share ideas, uh, discuss. But it's necessary for any community. And you have to keep it alive. It doesn't stay alive by itself. You have to keep nurturing it. And you nurture public sphere through disruption, conflict, and debate. There's no other way to do it. So in this sense, they have many more things in common than expected. One last remark, which is uh, some 
uh, additional uh, thought about what they might have in common and why they are sitting together tonight, to this afternoon in this in this room. Uh, for a long time, uh, networks, network cultures, have been uh, fueled and, and uh, by the idea of the possibility of free cooperation between people. Networks could be like the new utopia, to work as individuals, as groups, as organized collectives, as peers. This idea grew up, developed into the very fascinating idea of peer-to-peer -peer production as a way of actually dealing with any aspect of uh, life in common, life in society. Peer-to-peer -peer, peer -peer like a model to do things together in the arts, in society, dealing with technologies, with basic, basic needs, anything. So the idea that free cooperation is actually changing society and could change the old hierarchies, the, whole, the old structures of society. They were old structures. They need to be renovated and, and challenged and probably revolutionized. Uh, what's happening now in these very days, the last few years, we've seen it very clearly, that the idea of free cooperation, participation, has been the basis of the of a basic mode of operation of the activities of big actors, social actors, institutions, and especially corporations. We're witnessing giants nowadays in the uh, in the social networking platform uh, environments that actually are uh, are the promoters of the same tools we use every day and every, everywhere in the world. Nowadays, there's this weird contradiction. We have cooperation, we feel free in the networks, nobody's asking us anything, we are free to use these tools, and we freely share things, like things, uh, talk to people, create projects together on the networks. A great democratization of communication and self-expression. But we are doing this on the same infrastructure which is heavily centralized. It's owned by one single company, or two, or five in the whole world, right? So the idea of participation, cooperation, of free and peer-to-peer -peer exchanges uh, is actually uh, living together side by side with even stronger hierarchies. And this is a very big contradiction. So I guess that probably uh, there is a connection between telecommunists and, and the experience of John Law uh, in this field. John Law will probably mention how the Burning Man was, was born. This very famous and cult festival in the desert of Nevada, uh, which was born as some sort of a grassroots initiative and now probably got transformed, got mutated in some, into something else. And this reminds us probably of the evolution of our lives on the networks under the utopia of peer-to-peer -peer co cooperation and today in this context of heavily back-end centralization of the infrastructure.